Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is DIY, and today's gonna be a little bit of a different kind of video than what I normally do, uh, mainly because I'm just gonna be talking about stuff. I'm not gonna be really making anything. Uh, but I wanted to make this video uh, since I started 3D printing. You may have seen some videos on the channel pop up. They're mainly time lapses and also the Santa ornament video uh, from a couple weeks back. Uh, and so I just started 3D printing and um, if you 3D print or if you've looked at getting into 3D printing, then you know there's kind of a steep learning curve. There's a lot that you have to learn and kind of get accustomed to. And so I've only been printing for about two months, but I've been going really like hard at it. And I just wanted to kind of make a video talking about like a couple things that I found to be really important and helpful as a beginner, but that weren't necessarily readily available as information. So if you're experienced with 3D printing, then this video may not be uh, very fun for you. Uh, you may find it to be a bit boring or you may think some of the things I'm bringing up are kind of stupid. Uh, but I just wanted to put out there like things that I had issues with or that I think are important uh, for maybe other people who are just starting to print or want to get into printing just to kind of have that information out there for people. Uh, so here we go, and I've, I've broken it down into five things. So these are like five beginner tips from a beginner. So I think the first main thing that doesn't necessarily get discussed a lot because it's kind of taken for granted uh, is how does this whole thing work? You know, how does a 3D model on your computer uh, turn into a printed object out of plastic? How does that happen. Uh, so like I'm not gonna get too technical but just kind of like uh, a step-by-step -step thing because uh, I think a lot of people and I was one of these people too you hear a lot of program names thrown around you hear like Simplify 3D, Fusion 360, Cura, Slicer, Blender you hear all these things and you're like well why, why are you using this one? Why do you use this one? Uh, so basically you know the model starts uh, in 3D modeling software or CAD uh, and so those programs are Fusion 360, uh, Blender, there's a ton of them. And basically in there, like you model your thing and then you export it as an STL file. Uh, and think of that as like you're editing a video and you export an MP4 file, or you're editing a song and you export a wave or edit a photo and you get a JPEG. Uh, so you have this file and then there's one more step before you can actually start printing. You need to convert that file into something that the board uh, with the chip on the 3D printer can understand and decode, so it needs to be code, and that code's called G-code, uh, and it's these series of commands that tell the printer, you know, where to put the motor position and how much to filament to extrude and like where to extrude it and everything like that. So to do that, you need to import the STL file into what's called a slicer. Uh, and that literally slices the model into layers that are then printed one at a time on top of each other. So there's a lot of slicer options. Uh, most confusingly, there's actually a slicer called slicer, but <laughs> instead of the E, it's a three, uh, very elite. Uh, so uh, there's also Cura. Both of those are open source and free. And then there's also ones you can pay for. Um, the really popular one is Simplify 3D. Once you slice the model, um, it exports a G-code file. And then you need to get that to the printer, obviously. Uh, and the most common way that's done is with an SD card. There's a lot of other ways, Octoprint and everything like that. But the most common is with an SD card and then you just pop it in and the printer does its thing. You just say you're gonna print and there you go. So that's how the model file gets to a 3D printed object. And I only say this because when I first got my Mini Delta, and I saw the word G-code, I was like, excuse me? <laughs> like, I didn't realize that was a component of 3D printing. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there for the absolute beginners. If you were a complete noob like me, then now you know. And then that kind of leads me into my second uh, thing. If you're not a CAD expert, where do you get these files from to print? Where did all these come from? Uh, so there's Thingiverse and there's my mini factory. I've only really used Thingiverse so far. Um, basically people design their models and they throw them up there and you can search them and like them and download the files. But uh, a caveat to that and something I've experienced and I wanna share with you, don't take 
an, S, uh, an STL file download as just that's going to be work. It's going to work and everything. Uh, there's no one checking these. Like if someone says this case is going to perfectly fit your Nintendo Switch, like no one's checking that, you know. Um, so I had a model that I found that I was a big fan of. Uh, it was a Pokeball SD card holder. How cool is that? It's a really awesome model. It printed really well. I was really excited about it until I took an SD card and it doesn't fit. It's just slightly too small. Now I then read afterwards in the comments, people were saying, yeah, increase it to like 105% and then it's enough space. So I reprinted it at 105% and as you can see, the model is wonderful. The cards fit in, even the little ones. It's great, I love it. But check those comments. People are gonna leave advice in the comments. The author of the prints might also leave tips, like print this at 20% infill, it works the best that way, things like that. So definitely check those. Don't just download and blindly print like I did with that one. Don't live like me, basically. And speaking of how to print, I do want to talk about one aspect of printing that kind of eluded me at first because I didn't kind of realize that it this is how a certain aspect of it was supposed to be. Uh, and that's the first layer, that first layer that comes in contact with the build plate and everything builds upon. Uh, so I started with the mini Delta and I noticed that if I didn't print with a raft, it was an absolute disaster. I resigned myself, okay, I'll just print with rafts. It's fine. I'd rather like, waste a little bit of filament, take a little bit longer than have a print fail like in the middle, you know? It saves more time in the in the long run. So I'd kind of resign myself to that, but then I started noticing, especially when I was printing the back part of the enclosure for the Santa ornament from a few videos back, I was getting this stringing when I lifted it off the raft and I thought it was part of the raft that was actually stuck to the print. I could peel this off and I had no idea what was going on. I tried adjusting my raft settings and in the process I got a really nice raft dialed in, I have to say, but it seemed really weird and I couldn't figure it out for the life of me until I finally realized after, and it was doing the Santa ornament backplate because I had, I think I failed that print like five times where it like completed but then I had this like awful stuff on the back and I started to realize this is the first layer of the print this isn't the raft this isn't anything it's the first layer and so then I did some research and it wasn't really until the Prusa printer that has you dial in the Z height and tells you how that first layer is supposed to look something the mini delta doesn't do because it is a budget printer it's not going to have that sort of instruction and for a first time printer, you're not going to know. I learned that the first layer has to be kind of squished looking and thick, and it has to really adhere to the build plate. You don't want that layer to look like the rest of your layers. It needs to look more squished and flat. Uh, that's what you're going for, and I had no idea. And if you're just printing for the first time and you're just having stuff lift up, you're gonna think, oh, well, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I'll just use a raft. Oh, it's working with a raft. I think it's fine then. You know, you're not going to think that. So I just wanted to mention about the first layer and, and how it's supposed to be. And really that's probably the most important thing to first learn to dial in when you're printing. That leads me into my fourth thing. It's not really a tip. It's more kind of advice uh, in that when you start printing, you're going to have failed prints. You're going to have things go wrong and you're not going to know why. It's gonna be really frustrating and you're gonna have these problems kind of pop up that you notice or maybe the weird movements of your printer and you're not gonna know how to really describe them. Part of the process of 3D printing is learning how to troubleshoot and what you're troubleshooting for. You're not gonna know at first what you're looking for. And it comes with experience. It does eventually come, uh, but it's it's a learning curve. You know, it's like when you learn to solder for the first time or you learn any sort of skill, really. Like there's gonna be stuff that like, you know how it's supposed to be. Like when you're playing guitar, you know how it's supposed to sound, but you can't figure out why that one note just keeps clunking. You can't figure out why. And then you realize, oh, my hand isn't in the right position and that's why. So printing is a lot like that. It's as much of a 
Science as an art. Eventually you learn the unique idiosyncrasies of the process of printing, what's required to have a successful print just in general, in theory, uh, and also how your machine reacts to certain styles of prints and how the software works for the slicing and how to really dial that in. You kind of have to learn the language of printing in order to describe what's going on and then figure out what settings are controlling those problems you're having. Uh, and that takes a bit. That only comes through trial and error. Uh, and you just kind of have to kind of stick with it. And it doesn't mean that you're stupid. It doesn't mean your printer is bad. It doesn't mean the software is awful. It's just, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to get used to. And so that's just something that I kind of wanted to put out there that there there is this kind of learning curve because 3D printing is, I think, definitely more of an art and a skill rather than like a tool. It definitely is a tool, but there is that art and um, skill aspect to it. It's just something to keep in mind as you begin. And that leads me into my final tip, and that's to print all the things. That's why you got a printer, right? That's why you wanted to print. You just wanted to print everything. You saw the low poly, Pokemon and you're like, damn, that's cool. I want to print those. And you saw little like spinny things or like fun Christmas things, or you saw the Joel bot and you were like, damn, that's awesome. There's so much detail. Wow. Or you just want to print fun little containers for your electronics or special tools for your soldering wires or things like that. Like you just want to print everything. And that's a great way to start printing because all of these models here are slightly, are, are different, right? Like this is a hollow ball. Uh, this is a solid base with some minor shape details. This is an insane model that tortures your printer. Uh, and you have to really dial things in after a lot of trial and error. Uh, so they're all different and they all kind of pull on printer's strengths and weaknesses in different ways. And uh, I learn something new about printing every time I print a different kind of model. And it keeps things exciting. And with the Joel bot, oh my gosh, I learned so much with that model. It was such a challenge. It really is a torture test for your printer. Like you just look at all the detail and everything and the fact that it's just on the base with these two feet and it's getting so tall and there's wobbling and everything like that is it's, it's insane and as you can see i had three failed prints but they legit went in this order we had one that was just the legs where we didn't properly bridge to make the waist uh we have one where there's kind of a, almost a slight burn where the nozzle hits due to warping uh and that was it. And then we have the most heartbreaking failure. This one right here. It got all the way halfway through the head and it was like, nah, I'm done. <laughs> this was legit, like sad. Uh, but eventually I figured out how I needed to dial it in and it eventually printed. And it's also through printing different things that I figured out that my Delta was having the issues with the first layer. You know, just printing different things, you're gonna learn so much. and. What's cool about that is that's what you want to be doing with your printer to begin with. You want to be printing everything. So with each different type of model, you're learning how to better set up your printer for success. And maybe it's printed simple things fine, but then it totally just gives up on something like the Joel bot. Uh, and then you learn like, okay, well actually these settings could have been tweaked a lot better. Now I know. Uh, so yeah, my final thing, is print all the things because it's fun and that's how you learn. Uh, and that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, that's just, like I said, I, like I'm, I'm definitely still a beginner. <laughs> like I definitely am still learning. There's still some stuff I don't totally understand about printing. It's going to take me a bit to learn, but uh, I think it's important to, when you're tackling something new like this to just go at it head on um, and just try to learn as much as you can. Uh, and what's fun is with printing, you learn by printing, which is what you want to be doing anyway. Uh, so yeah, 
that's gonna wrap up this video. Uh, if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up and leave any questions or comments down below. Are you interested in 3D printing? Have you also just started? Let me know. And if you're on social media, I have my links down in the description. Share your models with me, let me know. Maybe you design models and you wanna see how it looks printed? Let me know, I'd be happy to print it. I really would, It would because I would learn something and you'd see your model printed by someone else. It's a win-win. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Um, people have been here for a long time. Uh, this isn't turning into a 3D printing channel. I just, I'm really into it right now. Uh, and there's definitely gonna be 3D printing incorporated now into things, but I've got videos coming up on a thermal paste experiment with my computer, a couple of fun electronics projects with the Raspberry Pi. So we're, we're, just, we're just mixing this in into this giant batter filled mixing bowl called Blitz City. Uh, but yeah, uh, until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.